speaker is going to be David Collier. Um, he's from the University of Arizona, and he's a former president of the Society of Professional Journalists and a nationally known expert on FOIA, on the Freedom of Information Act. Um, so if we can please welcome David Collier. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Oop. All right. A little, here we go. Here we go. A little better? Okay. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everyone. This is an amazing event. It's unique in the nation. I don't know of anything like it in the country. So what you're attending is actually really special, and I think it's something that, frankly, every state should have, and we should have a national gathering of all requesters to talk about these issues, because it's more important than ever. And thanks to Mary and the the, the club and the Better Government Association for putting this on. I think it's going to be a great day. I'm looking forward to it. So what I want to start with is just to kind of get people pumped up a little bit. I know it's early on a Saturday. We're not used to getting up early. So let's talk about why all this matters, shall we? And starting out, I do have handouts, but not physically, but I do have them online. So if you go to this website, and you can take pictures of it if you wish, what you'll find is a handout with a one-page tips on a lot of the URLs that I'm going to mention uh, briefly. So they're all there. You don't have to write things down. It's all on tip sheet. Uh, I have a 40-page tip sheet on strategies for acquiring public records. Uh, a lot of this is based on years and years of, of uh, research and training through SPJ and, and other organizations. Also have a handout on how to sue for public records on your own, sue pro, pro se, because unfortunately that's kind of what folks have to do nowadays in a lot of cases. So tip sheet, step by step, how to do it on your own as well as a sample claim. Uh, so you can kind of get a sense of what to fill out and you can use it. So all that's online at that website, feel free to, at the Dropbox, feel free to uh, download and have those and share them with your friends. You know, that makes great Christmas presents, Hanukkah, whatever. You know, wrap it with a bow. So, I wanted to mention something. I have to apologize. About six years ago, in 2010, I did a national tour. I traveled in a rented Chevy Impala all around the country, 35 states, 17,000 miles, talking to groups all over. And I passed through Chicago, and I apologize. I went from Minneapolis straight to Lansing. And um, I apologize, I didn't make a stop here, but I'm, I'm glad I'm here today. And during this tour, this is six, you know, this is uh, 2010, it was a tough time for journalists, right? The recession, layoffs, um, and as I went through around the country, I heard all these stories of no time for this and it's so hard to get records. And as I drove around, I took pictures like this one in Georgia, a back street of Georgia, and I took a picture of the scene because it just encapsulated what I was hearing from all these journalists. This is what it felt like <laughs> for all these journalists around the country. It felt like, oh my God, I don't, I, layoffs, I don't have time, I'm being added beats. How am I going to do all this? The government folks know it, so they're taking advantage of it. And it was really disheartening. So I actually changed the presentation title to, instead of Access Across America, to uh, Doing FOI When You're SOL. And, um, and I wanted to leave people with encouragement. So at the end of my presentation, every end of my 60 presentations, I had a slide and I said, you have to get in a good document state of mind. You have to get charged up. You have to be the Donald. And this is an actual slide I used in my presentation every time to rally people behind FOI, to get them excited. Because Donald, the Donald at that time, he can walk into his corporations and ask to see anything, right? He's in charge, just like we're in charge of the government. So we should be the Donald, all right? Well, things have changed. A few things have happened since then. And now we live in this whole world of weirdness is just every day inundating us. 
these tweets that are just hot ha harping and ham just going off on the media and every day I can't even keep track of it, right? It's like, oh my God, fake news, dishonest media. I just need peace, right? I need, I need puppies and babies and puppies and babies. I need to kind of, you know, chill out a little bit because it's just a little too much. It's just overwhelming. And we need some facts here. We need to figure out, okay, so what's going on here? We're gonna regroup. We don't just wanna respond emotionally. And so Knight asked me to do a study this winter. So the past couple months, I've, uh, I surveyed a bunch of people and I interviewed a bunch of people, uh, FOIA experts, journalists, all sorts of people, to find out what's the state of freedom of information in America today, at the federal and state and local level, and what, we could do, what can we do to make it better. And, and this report will be released uh, March 12th for Sunshine Week. Uh, look for it. It's uh, going to be coming out. We're working on the final product now. Uh, a couple things I'll like tease you with ahead of time. About half said access has gotten worse over the past four years, as well as at the federal level. Uh, some, a bunch of people said it's basically stayed about the same, uh, and then a, a slight, a really small uh, minority said it's gotten better. Um, and uh, also, a b big chunk said denials are on the rise, and nine out of 10 people said it's gonna get worse. It's this is just gonna get worse. And this was before Trump took office, by the way. So the prediction kind of came true uh, of what's gonna get worse. Now, of course, most of us don't cover federal agencies or the White House here. Anybody here cover the White House? Raise your hand. Anybody here with the White House press corps? No. I mean, the majority of journalists do not cover the White House. But we do cover town halls, and we cover school boards, and we cover state legislatures, and other government entities. And they take, they take hints from the folks up top. A friend, a friend of mine, Charles Davis, calls this trickle-down fascism. And, uh, and so what happens up top often trickles down to our lives and our governments and our local agencies. And so this is why this is so important today. Uh, one reporter, Ted Brightus at the AP, said it's going to be a backyard brawl. And he was right. He predicted it spot on. It is getting terrible. And you know, what do you do about it? Do you cower? Do we just you know, worry about it? Do we have problems? I mean, how many of you have been denied records? Raise your hand. All right, yeah. It's aggravating, right? Do we, do we shirk away? Do we skulk away into the shadows and just weep? No, no, we don't do that. We fight, right? <laughs> we, we do not cower away from the challenges that we have before us. It was bad the past four years under Obama, and it's just going to get worse the next four years. So we get together and we move ahead. So what do we do? Well. We have to first get in a document state of mind. Since apparently the government folks are less and less likely to talk to us openly or let us talk to government employees directly or talk to government employees without submitting questions ahead of time or having a PIO sit in there as we interview someone, because the message management's getting so strong, we have to get to the actual facts of what's happening. And a lot of that's through public records. So we have to get in a document state of mind. And there are lots of ways to do this. In the handouts, you'll download tons of ideas for getting a document state of mind. You could go to FOIA Mapper and look at all the agencies and the different records that are available that you can request. And FOIA Mapper helps you identify the addresses, where to send the requests, all sorts of ideas. We have Muckrock, of course. Anyone use Muckrock in here? Do you like it? Good? Yes. Muckrock is amazing. Thousands and thousands of public records requests going through Muckrock. The records posted online, you can get so many ideas, keyword searchable. Uh, now they're putting a, appeal letters up, uh, request letters. You can get lots of ideas from Muckrock. As well as just IRE, investigative reporters and editors, other organizations, SPJ of course, uh, have tons of ideas, tip sheets, all sorts of, go online, while you're watching um, This Is Us, 
or you know, Honey Boo Boo reruns or whatever you watch. Go through and just get ideas, get ideas. And of course, you have to consult the law and know uh, it back and forward. And there are lots of resources and most of you know the laws better than the city attorneys, yes? You, you, you say, this is public. And they say no and they come up with bogus ideas. Attorneys are very creative. I admire attorneys a lot because you have to be creative to be an attorney, uh, especially when your boss is telling you we don't want to release these, so what can we come up with? And so it's important to know the law uh, so we can speak intelligently. Um, put in one records order per week. This is a tip. This is what I did as a journalist. Every week, and I had a sticky note on my computer, and every week I reminded myself, it was Friday morning, I went into work an hour early, and that was my hour to do FOIA work. So I, I wrote up a records request, I sent it out, I followed up on my other requests that were pending, and that changed my reporting completely. Because guess what? How many weeks are there in a year, right? 52, good one. Uh, and that's 52 public records requests that you would make that you might not have made anyway. And if you get good data and records out of just half of them, that's 26 incredible stories that you get a year that you didn't get before. Every two weeks you have a kick butt story that'll impress your boss, your readers, and make the world a better place. So just one hour a week, it can change your life. Put in these orders, put in these records orders. Now, now, why do I call this a record order? How many of you have heard that term, record order? Yeah. No, what, it's always records request, right? No, we have to change the terminology of FOI. We have to change the mindset of requesters and the government. We need to put in record orders, not requests. This is a record request. That is a record request. <laughs> this is an order. This is a records order, all right? Request, order. So, so what am I talking about? It's like putting in an order for a sandwich, a meatball sandwich. It's like putting an order in for a library book, putting an order in for a pair of shoes on layaway, whatever. You're putting in an order. I'd like, I want to see this information. Go get this, please. Request, order. Okay, so terminology is so important in mindset, in how we approach this as individuals in a society, frankly. And there are lots of request order templates online. Some of you probably have them in your newsrooms. The Student Press Law Center has an excellent automated letter order generator. And uh, you can just go online and add in some information and it pops out all the legalese, all easy for you to email away. So definitely. Uh, Put these, put these orders in as much as possible. Now, sometimes, like in the case of this letter, it can be a little threatening. At the end of this automated letter, it basically lays out the penalties for non-compliance. And you may choose to put that in or, or not. So uh, how many of you think, in fact, I did an experiment on this, how many of you think that the threatening letter is more effective than a friendly letter or a neutral letter? Now, what would work? Threatening legalistic letter sent to your people. More effective. One person, two people, all right? Well, I wanted to find out. So I ran two experiments. In the experiments, I had a friendly letter, which I created using the theories of psychology and persuasion, because I, I, I do that in my research. I, research, I did a lot of psych psychological research in FOI. And uh, it makes me a little weird nationally, but um, I love it because it's all, this is a people process, right? It's about psychology. So in this letter, I sprinkled a half dozen psychological techniques that have proven to show you can get people to do what you want. Little Jedi mind tricks throughout. You will give me the record. <laughs> and, um, and then I had a neutral letter, which is the reporters committee letter, and then the student press law center legalistic threatening letter. Uh, got a journalist, 
sent randomly distributed the th letters, to, the journalists didn't know who got what, to all the police agencies in Arizona and all the school districts in Arizona for various records for a story, a couple stories. And then the journalists tracked all this data coming back, how fast they responded, um, whether we got the records, all this sort of information. Uh, one letter worked by far. Fast response, more records compliance, uh, lower copy fees, etc. It was this letter. It was the threatening mean letter. Worked best by far. Weird, huh? Weird, huh? Now, there were some officials that took exception to it. They're like, you don't have to be so rude about it. And, uh, you know, but uh, for the most part, they followed the law. And that's essentially what happens. If you make it clear that this is part of the law, then they're more likely to comply. Don't have to be a jerk about it, but re reinforce this is the law. This is an obligation. This is a state law. Can't break state law. I can't break state law, you know? And then, of course, track your records. Track um, everything about it, what people say over time. You can use Excel, you can use a written notebook, which is what I use. You could use electronic tools like, like iFOIA that Reporters Committee started or FOIA machine, which also will help you submit and track records requests. Tons of tools to track. Just make sure you track. But the reality is we're often here no, right? They'll often tell us no. And I looked at FOIA audits around the country, and uh, on average, nationally, police will deny illegally you a basic crime log. Police will break the law. This is crazy. How could they get away with that? How can the government get away with not giving you records that you deserve by law. Because there's no repercussions, right? There's no FOI police running around writing tickets. It's us having to sue, which is not easy, right? We're not lawyers. We don't have a lot of money or time. And the government knows that, a lot of government agencies. So what do we do? We fight back. We don't let that happen. And there are a variety of ways we could do that. Uh, there are a lot of appeal letters available on iFOIA that you can use, templates. Muckrock is gathering up appeal letters. If you submit an appeal letter, a third of the time it'll cut the records loose. So it doesn't hurt, it's free, just do it. Uh, now often it doesn't work. So you have to kind of take off your gloves and get serious. Maybe you um, go above. The clerk says no. You go up to the city manager. You go up to the city council. You go up to the taxpayer and the voters. Whatever it is, you go up the ladder. Uh, you report about it. Public agencies are sensitive to negative publicity. Write about it. Put on out there what they're keeping secret. Some journalists tell me, oh, that's a conflict of interest. People don't want to know. No, this is not inside baseball. When they say no to you, they're saying no to the hundreds of thousands, millions of people you represent. Tell those people. Tell those people. Um, maybe you want to order emails about the request. So they're dinking you around. Put in a FOIA request for all the emails pertaining to your FOIA requests and you. And they will freak out <laughs> because they'll realize, oh my god. I called this reporter a such and a such and a so such and a such. And, you know, and it's amazing to see the communications behind the scenes behind your back. And uh, if that doesn't get you kind of riled up, nothing will. So, uh, so, and sometimes they'll just say, here you go, just take the records and go. Uh, bury them. You know, I'll, I'll go and say, look, clearly this is public. Uh, I don't know what you're trying to hide, but, and this, there's nothing personal, nothing personal. Do, you can do a little Columbo here, you know, I, I just don't kind of get why, you know, this wouldn't be public. So, you know, can you, can you help me understand, I, as a journalist, I, I feel there's probably more there. So here are 20 more public records requests, so, you know, it's nothing personal, it's just part of my job, I got to find out what's there. It's just what I do. Uh, make it so hard for them to say 
know that they got to say yes to where, and, and again, not being a jerk about it, being very professional, because that's what we are, we're professionals, but uh, being clear that you're not going to go away. Heads on pikes. I have a list of agencies in Arizona that have denied records and been sued and lost and had to pay attorney fees, forty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. And I just provide that list to the agency and I say, I don't get it, you know, you know, George, you, you are a fine city manager, but all these other cities, they, they said no, and look what happened to them. They, had to, they got sued and all this tax dollar wasted and the publicity. You don't want to be added to my list of losers, do you? you know, so make it painful. Make the no worse than the yes. And that includes posting on your website, days of denial or seconds of secrecy, a little clock ticking every second that they don't give up that record. This is, and explain what they're not giving up. City manager's evaluation. Explain why it's important. And just pressure publicly over and over. And after a while, they may crack. Uh, release the hounds. Often a simple letter from a lawyer will do the trick. Just send a letter and boom, you'll be able to cut that loose. And many, many other strategies, psychological strategies are available in the tip sheets and also a book that I co-authored with Charles Davis, little cheap plug, um, but it's the only textbook on accessing public records that I know of. And it's, uh, so if you're interested, there's a lot more there if you want to read more about it. Sometimes you just got to sue. Sometimes, you know, too soon? Too soon? <laughs> okay. Um, some, sometimes you just got to sue, you know, whether you like it or not. And one of my heroes, FOIA heroes, is Jorge Rojas. Jorge is amazing. He's a 20-year-old undergraduate flight transportation major, like I didn't know they even had that major, at Arizona State University, right? Up the road from me. I'm at the University of Arizona. So Jorge, he... Uh, was denied certification, and he was curious by the FAA. Uh, he wants to be an air traffic controller. And so he's wondering, and he learned in class how they're trying to diversify air traffic controllers. So he put in some FOIA requests to the FAA asking for some information about diversity certification, and they denied him outright. At first they ignored him. And he got angry. He's like, they can't do that. And so he went on Google, because that's what every undergrad does first, right? All right? Any undergrads here? Yeah, the Googles. Love the Googles. And he Googled, you know, FAA FOIA. And up came all these claims, these lawsuits, and he found one, and he copied and pasted. Right? Undergrads, yeah? Copy, paste, yeah? <laughs> and so he, uh, he, he just filed his own lawsuit. He scraped up $400 with his uh, part-time lab job, $10 an hour, went down to the U.S. District Courthouse, filed suit against the FAA on his own. He won on summary judgment almost immediately. He, they denied him more records. He sued three more times. He's won every one of them on his own. And he got his, attorney, his court fees back. So he's not out of pocket. Jorge uh, continues to go after the FAA, and his records that he's divulged have actually been reported in media as showing problems in their certification process. Now, if Jorge can do this, a student at Arizona State University can do this, then anybody can do this. And, uh, and I think that it's, it's worthy. But you may think to yourself, how can I do this for my organization? There's no money for it. There's no fees for it. Where do I get the money? How do I find it? Well, there are resources. Uh, the SPJ Legal Defense Fund can, um, can provide you up to $5,000 to kick that thing going, and, and, and they may award you more uh, if you need it. The NFOIC, National Freedom of Information Coalition Night Litigation Fund, can provide you money for court costs. It's real simple, you just fill out a, a one-page form, basically two pages, and they, they give you money. So money should not be an obstacle. You can find an attorney. In fact, I just worked with a journalism student yesterday in finding an attorney 
they're suing, the student paper suing the Board of Regents of the university, uh, the state, for, key, for uh, pre uh, presidential search uh, CVs. And so the students are going to sue using these funds. So there are resources available. Go for it. And last, don't get mad. We can get oh. mad, but just get busy. So uh, some of the recommendations in the study that will be coming out next month, uh, and there were hundreds, hundreds of great ideas, just amazing ideas out there. And I bet all of you have great ideas of your own. I'd like to hear them. So I'm going to be around all day. And if you have ideas, I want to hear from you. So tell me. I want to learn. I'm, I'm a student of the art of access. I'm trying to learn every day. Uh, one thing, kind of common thing, is we have to band together. We have to get together, particularly in the next four years. We see that all over the place. And it started last month. 50 journalism organizations gathered together in Washington, D.C. for a press freedom summit to figure out how they can better coordinate to fight against what we're, well, frankly, you know, press oppression is what we're seeing now. We're seeing journalists singled out for doing their jobs. And we have to band together. And we're starting to see that, right? After Trump kicked out the New York Times and CNN from the gaggles, now media are starting to boycott these. And we need 100% boycott. Those folks should take a stand and send a message to journalists throughout the country that we don't have to put up with this. So this is critical, banding together. We have to do this more than ever. We have to bolster litigation efforts. And some of that's underway at the federal level. So there's a new Knight First Amendment Institute at Columbia University that's going to sue feder federal white. Uh, Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press sues. Student Press Law Center will help uh, journalists sue. But that is not enough, right? It's not going to help you all in Chicago and the region and all around here, right? You need s just to sue for a police report. Right? That's not going to make huge case law change, but yet you don't have the resources to do that, and we need that. So there's a call for a state's focused litigation center, someone to coordinate helping you be able to sue. And there are a lot of ways that we can do that, and we'll be in the report. We need to um, develop more digital tools. You know, digital tools can help. They're not the end-all, be-all. Because really, it comes down to fighting. It comes down to smarts up here. But digital tools can help. And we need the tech companies to step up. You know, Facebook can't just like rob journalism anymore. Facebook needs to put its money where its mouth is, like, like Craig Mook Newmark did from Craigslist. He put up like a million for Pointer to do this sort of thing. So we need that to go on. Uh, we need to increase education and advocacy. I mean, look, gun rights has the Second Amendment, a huge champion for the Second Amendment. Who's that? NRA. The NRA, right. We don't have an NRA for the First Amendment, do we? Who's the NRA for the First Amendment? Nobody. Say what? ACLU. ACLU is probably the most commonly noted uh, champion for the First Amendment, right. SPJ. SPJ is a champion, exactly. But, uh, but we don't have the clout, the oomph in, within the journalism realm and the FOI realm that the NRA has on the Second Amendment. And we need that. I mean, can you think of any organization that funds political candidates that are FOIA friendly? Wouldn't that be something? To get people elected to office who are FOIA friendly? Other industries and interests do that, yes. Environmentalists get people elected who are environmental friendly. Industry gets people elected who are industry friendly. But yet we don't do that for, for FOI, and we need to do that. And we just need to educate the public, right? It's like news literacy. How many of your friends and family members even get it, unless they've talked to you a lot? All right. They don't get it. They don't understand why this is important. And we have to educate people on why this matters. It's not just some philosophical, oh, founding fathers said blah, blah, blah. And it is part of that. But it's more than that. This is, this is democracy at play. 
And we need to support the cause. We need to step up and do it. And however we do it, we need to just open up our pocketbooks, our time, and support the cause. So, like, SPJ has the First Amendment Forever Fund. Just started a couple years ago, an endowment to fund advocacy for FOIA and press freedom. In fact, you all graciously offered me an honorarium, and I really appreciate it, but I said, no, send that to that fund, because that's where it's needed the most. And I hope that you support, whether it's the SPJ chapter here in town, or, uh, or the ACLU, or SPJ, or Reporters Committee, whatever it is, we need, to, we need to fund this and make it important. Lastly, I just want to end with a final note. I want everybody in here, I hope, to get jazz today, to learn new tips, hope you walk away with ideas of records to get, of strategies of overcoming records, issues that you might have, of sharing, of making contacts, of networking, because you can help each other out here. You can go in on records requests together. Pressure, I call them watchdog piles, right? Dog pile on an agency. Right here, everybody here. Get to know one another. And then leave tonight better informed and feeling like you need to feel. Be the cat. All right, thank you.